bloggers pow Right, another year has come to an end, but what have I been playing this year? These are my top picks that have been on my systems over the last 12 months. Well, first off this year is Control, which I'd had my eye on for a while, and uh, while waiting for it to go down in price, I finally noticed it was on uh, PlayStation Plus as one of my free downloadable games. So, ah, brilliant, why not? So, in Control, you play a detective lady whose name completely escapes me and it's your job to find out what has happened inside the oldest house which is a shady part of the US government and as you explore through there's combat and you build up psychic abilities you can throw stuff around and float and stuff but you're wondering what the hell has happened here there's members of the staff who have been mutated there's weird goings on, there's artefacts to find. There's a strange bit where you're often sent to a deserted motel. It's just really eerie and unnerving. The puzzles to solve there, but it just feels odd and off. It's all very X-Files or the SCP files, that sort of thing. Uh, both of which are things I, that fascinate me, especially the SCP files. Really reminds me of that. It's a really, really good game. I'm going to be saying that a lot in the next 15 minutes. It's made by Remedy, who uh, probably best known for Max Payne. And it's um, well worth your time, well worth picking up. It's probably on Xbox Games for Gold, or obviously if you're a PlayStation Plus member, you've probably still got it sitting there to, uh, to grab, maybe. I don't know, I can't remember how these things work. But Control is really, really good. Really spooky in places, satisfying combat, and an all-round hit, I think. Right now, a very quick word here about War of Revenge, which I covered earlier in the year in, a, in its own video, but I just want to quickly shout it out because it is excellent, and if you haven't played it, you should do. Hell, even Raken Skull played it, and he likes it. That's recommendation enough, isn't it? Right, this is Galacticon. This is a game out of time. When you load this up and play it, you're thinking you're probably playing a conversion of a really old, obscure, early 80s arcade shooter, a score-based one. You know, thinking Defender mixed with Joust, and how you never managed to play it back in the arcades back in the day. Well, that's because it's brand new. Well, it came out this year from the lovely chaps at Flynn's Arcade, appropriately named company. And this is glorious golden age of arcades action. Score-based, fluid controls, pin shop graphics. It's absolutely brilliant. I really do recommend picking it up if you love your score-based old-style arcade games. Absolutely fantastic. Don't let this one pass you by. Right, this is Anno Mutation Um. I think I pronounced that right. I've been trying all day to pronounce it properly. And this is, for want of a better word, a point and click adventure. It's not much pointing and clicking, but the idea is you've got mysteries to solve, quests to run, and it's all done in this fantastic pixel art style, which is also 3D as well. It looks absolutely beautiful. There's a few sections of the game which are run jumping combat sections and they're pretty good but the main meat of the game is the adventure the uh, talking to people the quests the fetching and it's just so beautiful to look at these graphics are incredible there's so much detail in this it's absolutely amazing. Now I've come nowhere near close to finishing it. You know what I'm like for finishing games, so I just never get around to it. But this is excellent. I really need to get back into it. When I saw it was being released on Switch, I jumped on it on day one. I had my eye on, it on PlayStation 4, uh, but it was going to get more playtime on the Switch with me. 
There's so many little details in, in these locations. So many little things. There's even nods to other games. Like in one section you meet Jill Stingray from Valhalla. Um, and that was a great little bonus thing for a big Valhalla fan like me. Absolutely excellent. So yes, if you want something which is a, a bit of entry with a little bit of combat, but with absolutely stunning pixel art graphics, pick this one up. So there had to be issues, Mutt. This is Cotton Fantasy, a new cotton game for uh, new consoles. Um, PlayStation 4, Switch, maybe PC, I don't know. Again, this is the Switch version. And this is a lovely update to the Cotton games. Multiple characters, you've got unlocking stages, you've got nods to, again, other games like Sandvane and Cyvaria. If you'd like to shoot them up, this is a really good way to spend your time. The gameplay for each character is significantly different to make it, make it worth playing through the whole game with all the different characters and the, the extra stages unlocked depending on which character you finish the game with. So well worth multiple replays. Excellent stuff. Well, we've been spoiled this year. There's not one, but two sideways scrolling beat-ups which have made my end of the year list. First off is Final Vendetta. When I loaded this up for the first time, I knew this was going to be one of the games of my year. This is fantastic. It's an update of the Final Fight Stroke Street to Rage sort of formula, dragged kicking and screaming into the uh, 2020s. The cool thing about this, and one of the things I like about it the most, it's a period piece. This is set in the 90s with Utah Saints music and old style police cars in the background. And it's also set in England. It's absolutely great. Really, really good stuff. And it, as I say, it would have been the best scrolling beat-em-up of the year if it wasn't for... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. And this is an excellent side where scrolling beat-em-up. It's got a lot of detail to the sprites, the backgrounds are fantastic, there's a massive amount of combo moves to use, there's quite a lot of levels as well, unlockable characters, it's really really good. You can play up to six players on this, absolutely insane. If you really like Sideways Gone beat em up, buy this. If you really like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, buy this. If you like both, definitely buy this. It's different enough from Final Vendetta to want them both being bought, I'd say. Both absolutely fantastic games, definitely well worth adding to your, your collections. Right, so next up we have Watch Dogs Legion. And again, I get suckered into one of these big open world games. And this one's especially fascinating because it's set in future London under, dy under a dystopian government. Who would have thought, eh? Anyway, so you play uh, multiple characters, all with different personality traits and skills, to bring down the man, so to say. And there's lots of driving around, as you'd expect, and combat. And also some nice hacking stuff where you can hack drones to do your bidding, hack cameras, there's some stealth sections. But the main appeal here is the driving around London, because there's recognisable landmarks all over the place. And because it's set in the near future, it's recognisable, but strangely different. Navigation around the place is great if you do know London, and it's fairly easy if you don't as well, but the amount of detail here is absolutely phenomenal. I bought the PS4 version because it had a free PS5 upgrade and that's what we're seeing here, albeit in a sl lower than 4K resolution, but it really is worth some time. I've not played any of the other Watchdog games so I can't really compare, but this one really grabbed me and it was really interesting and really good fun. Right, there was another shoot -em up this year, and it was Android Dunos 2. A strange thing. A sequel to an old Neo Geo game nobody really paid any attention to at the time. So a sequel was made. For the Switch, PlayStation 4, etc, etc. And this is excellent. This is proper, old school, 80 stroke 90 sideways calling shoot -em up action. 
It's got your power-ups, it's got your bosses, it's got your waves of aliens. And it's so well done. And do you know what? A lot of it reminds me as if somebody really did a sequel to Axley in some ways. The graphics and sound are excellent. And it's all been done in a very, very 90s, 80s sort of way. It's almost like they went back in time and fished out a sequel that never existed. But no, this is brand new. Really, really good stuff. I've played this a hell of a lot. I really have. I've finished it a couple of times on probably the easiest setting. But it's really, really good. If you're a fan of this kind of shoot up, pick it up, definitely. Well recommended by me. Right, another year has passed, that means another year of Call of Duty, which again has been my most played thing. This year it's split across two games. This time last year I started playing Vanguard, and the guy started playing Vanguard. And we played some more Warzone as well, but uh, that took up for the most of the year. We've had a lot of good games. We've played a lot of shipment. We've played a lot of Das House. We've played a lot of Warzone. Mainly in the Resurgence, and we've had quite a few wins as well, which was nice. Warzone had a couple of events, most notably the Godzilla vs King Kong event, which was really strange but really good fun at the same time. But aside from that, it's just been a year full of shooting stuff, getting kills, getting wins, keeping our KD up, and having a whole lot of fun. Then towards the end of this year, the long-awaited Modern Warfare 2 came out, and it all started again. Vanguard was swept aside, and we played a whole lot of Modern Warfare 2. The game wasn't without its issues, there were a few bugs first off, but it seems to be an ironed out now. One of the new modes there is a, a DMZ mode, where you drop into Al Masra and complete contracts for money and upgrade your guns, but it's a uh, situation where you have to get out alive on the escape chopper to uh, continue with the loot that you've already got, otherwise you lose everything. And the good thing with that, there's lots of bots to shoot, but also there's other players, real people, to run over as well. So yes, Modern Warfare 2 has been this year's Call of Duty and uh, Call of Duty as a whole has been what I've spent the most time playing. Been a lot of fun. So there were my games of the year, what did you think of them, and what were your games of the year? Comment below! Here, subscribe, or naff off!